Praise and glory be to God. We have been going through the Gospel of Matthew these days. And the passage for today's message is Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. Last week we have seen from uh, Matthew chapter 19, a young rich man coming to Lord Jesus Christ and asking him a question. Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And we have seen him going away from Lord Jesus Christ, sorrowful, losing his eternal life because this man loved his possessions, loved his wealth more than he loved God, his creator. And subsequently we see Peter asking our Lord a question. See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? That was the question Peter asked our Lord. See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? When we went through chapter 18, there also we asked Peter asking our Lord a question. Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. We see the mentality of Peter here. We see his attitude, holier than thou attitude. He believed that it would be always his brother who would be sinning against him and not he. When we go through his life, in his walk with the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels and also in the Acts of the Apostles, we see that it was Peter who was messing up things on so many occasions that it was he who needed our Lord's forgiveness on so many occasions, more than seven times. This question also comes under that category. See, in chapter 16, Peter was declaring to Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And within a few days, we see him asking this question. See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? We see him gloating. We see his old self coming out. We see him bargaining with Lord Jesus Christ. See, I have done this thing for you, so what are you going to give me? The all-knowing God, our Lord Jesus Christ, knew pretty well that this man would deny him, not once, but three times in the coming day. Our Lord knew pretty well that this man would forsake him when the trouble comes. And our Lord knew pretty well that this man would blaspheme, cursing and swearing to others, I do not know this man. But our Lord, who was gracious, merciful, slow to anger, abounding in mercy, forgiving Peter for asking such question. He tells him this, he replies him, Assuredly, I say to you, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tri tribes of Israel. And everyone who left houses, brothers or sisters, father or mother, wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life but but many who are first will be last and the last first that is what we see at the end of chapter 19 so what we see in this chapter 20 from verses 1 to 16 the parable is in continuation of what we see at the end of chapter 19. Let us go through verses 1 to 7 of this chapter 20. 
there our lord says for the kingdom of heaven is like a land owner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard <coughs> now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius he sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle and said to them you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right i will give you and again uh, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise and about the eleventh hour he went out and saw others standing idle and he asked them he said to them why have you been standing here idle all day and those people answered because no one hired us and he said to them you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right you will receive so we see here two groups of people the people who were hired about the start of the day with an agreement that they would be paid a denarius each and the other groups those who were hired at 9 am 12 noon and 3 pm and even at about 5 pm just before the winding up time and those people were told very clearly whatever is right they would be receiving it that was the agreement <clears throat> when we were living in sharja the united arab emirates about uh, 25 years back there was a big park opposite our apartment whenever i used to leave for my work early in the morning i used to see a very big crowd standing there who were these people they were jobless people unskilled laborers they were at the bottom of the social economic scale they were waiting for some contractors to come and pick them up for daily work these people were moving from job to job without any guarantee that someone would hire him the second day there were so many construction projects going on at that time there and if someone picks you up then you are lucky you can get some money to meet the needs your physical needs of that day so sometimes even after one or two hours say around 7 o'clock 8 o'clock these people used to come and pick some more laborers if there was shortage at the construction site but you cannot normally expect them to come out about 12 o'clock or 3 pm in the evening and forget about them coming at 5 o'clock just before the closing time in contrast to that we see here a generous and gracious land owner who was concerned not about his income he was concerned about the well being of these unemployed laborers so now it is the payment time verses 8 to 10 says now when the evening had come the land owner said to the steward call the laborers and give them their wages beginning with the last to the first clearly a reversal of order normally it is first come first served but here the land owner says very clearly beginning with the last to the first and when those came who were hired about the 11th hour they each received a denarius and those who were the first when they came they suppose they would receive more and likewise they each received a denarius so everyone was paid the same wages a denarius whether he was hired about the start of the day or at any other time and that includes uh, about the 11th hour just one hour before the closing time everyone was paid the same wage there are so many views about what our lord was trying to illustrate with this parable some people say that it is about god's covenant 
first with the Jews and then with the Gentiles. And, I, and in the end, all are given the same privileges. Some other people view it uh, as a synopsis of how the gospel began to spread. That those who were hired about the start of the day were the apostles. And those who were converted uh, on the day of Pentecost were the laborers who were, who were chosen about the third hour. And it goes on like that. And some other people view this parable as an illustration of where each of us met personally our Lord Jesus Christ on our life's journey. The ones who were hired about the start of the day represents the children and the younger ones because they, had, uh, they have their whole life before them to serve the Lord in his vineyard. And those who were hired about the third hour represents the, the teens and subsequently uh, the middle-aged people, the adults. And those who were hired about the 11th hour represents those who became God's children just a few days or a few months or even a few hours before their death. There are so many examples in the history for that. Even in uh, the scriptures, we can see the thief at the cross, he found salvation just a few hours before his death. But for me, this is a story of grace. This is a story of grace. There is no doubt in that. See, the gracious and generous landowner represents God Almighty. There is no doubt in that. And the vineyard represents his kingdom. And those who were hired, those who were sent, those who were chosen and sent into his vineyard represents the children of God who were saved. And remember, you and I are serving him in his vineyard. <clears throat> and the day is going to come when we will be rewarded according to what we have done. So this is a story of grace. We should understand that the landowner had no obligation to choose any one of these laborers to go into his vineyard. It was his choice. By grace, he had chosen these people to go into his vineyard. We must understand that it was not based on any qualification. And that included the apostles. See, in John chapter 15, verse 16, our Lord says very clearly to these people, eh, you did not choose me, but I chose you. So it was not based on any qualifications. Those who were hired about the start of the day were no more qualified than those who were hired about the 11th hour. It was not based on your education or experience or any other qualifications. Scripture states very clearly, for all have sinned. No exemption. No one is qualified. For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. That we should understand. You and I have been chosen not because of our worthiness, but because of his grace. And we should also uh, remember one more thing. Each and every one of these workers had the same option, whether to accept his call or not. The landowner simply said to them, you go into my vineyard to serve me. So it was up to them whether to accept it or not. They had the choice whether to accept that invitation or not. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whoever believes, you have to do that. God had done his part. He loved you so much. He gave his only begotten son for you and opened the way. It is for you to believe and accept him. 
when we go through john chapter 7 we see our lord jesus christ was standing on the great day of the feast and crying out if any one thirst let him come to me and drink if any one thirst the invitation was for everyone it is for everyone each of those person to 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 decide whether uh, he is going to accept that or not so this is a story of grace so then what happens verses 8 to 10 we have seen that at the time of payment everyone received a denarius each then we see the complaint verses 11 and 12 says when the when when those who were hired about the start of the day came they supposed that they would receive more from human point of view it looks very fair there is no doubt in that so these people complained they said to the land owner these last men have worked only one hour and you made them equal to us that is what the scripture says these last men have worked only one hour and you made them equal to us this is not only a story of grace this is also a story of greed not a normal type of greed but a nefarious type of greed there is no doubt in that see they were paid what was agreed a fair and generous wage even a roman soldier was getting a denarius a day on those days a roman soldier was very very higher than these people on the social economic scale so the land owner was very generous to offer them a denarius a day but the problem here is not that they wanted more they wanted the other people to receive less that was the complaint you made them equal to us see comparing our life with others is the root of all problem we should understand that go through exodus chapter 20 we see the commandments there in verse 17 we see the last commandment what what is that you shall not covet your neighbor's house you shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor is male servant nor is female servant nor is ox nor is donkey nor anything that is your neighbors that commandment is there why because god knew pretty well that this would be the root that would lead to that would ultimately lead to stealing murder and adultery why did uh, cain kill abel because abel had something that cain could not have god's blessing so cain thought if i couldn't have it then abel wouldn't have it either that is why he killed abel that is why david committed adultery with bathsheba and killed her husband that is the reality of life See God has offered each and every one in this world a gift of eternal life but Satan will try his level best to keep you away from accepting it why because he doesn't want you to have something that he had already lost that is the truth finally in verses 13 to 15 we see the land owner refuting these people's complaint with a crushing blow verses 13 to 15 he says very clearly friend i am doing you no wrong friend i am doing you no wrong did you not agree with me for a denarius take what is yours and go your way i wish to give the same as i gave you i wish to give the same as to you 
is it not lawful for me to to do what i wish with my own things see how wonderfully he says that is it not lawful for me to do what i wish with my own things or is your eye evil because i am good wonderful he says see i am doing you no wrong i have given you what was agreed between you and me what i am giving to other person it is none of your business even if i give him half of my wealth who are you to complain about that that was that is your eye evil because i am good remember what would have happened to these people had the land owner not chosen them in the first place that we should think about what would have happened to these people had the land owner not chosen them in the first place they would be standing in that marketplace idle all the day and ultimately they will go home empty handed hungry worried about their future that would be their place that would be their condition what would be our condition if god had not shown grace on us what would be our condition if god had not shown mercy on us we would be on our way to eternal death there is no doubt in that we should always keep that in our mind so many times when we when we go through little difficulties uh, little sicknesses in our lives little 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 financial trouble in our lives we start complaining we start murmuring we start grumbling we take god's grace for granted we should remember that remember what would have happened to you had he not chosen is chosen had he not chosen you we should always remember that see psalm chapter 73 is one of the beautiful psalms in the book of psalms written by that great man asaph a great musician a great singer and a great lyricist that we see in the temple of god in the old testament at least 12 psalms are there 12 psalms are attributed to his name in the book of psalms psalms chapter 73 deals with this subject the problem with this man was even though god blessed him this man was comparing his life with ungodly people looking at that prosperity looking at his sufferings this man was complaining grumbling murmuring against god see those people are happy and prosperous but i who is going who is living a godly life i uh, am suffering why and finally he says i almost slipped and fell down in my spiritual walk when i shifted my focus from god to those people that was the problem comparing our lives with those of others he says very clearly when i shifted my focus from my god and started looking at others i almost slipped and fell down finally when i entered into the sanctuary of god to get the answer god revealed to me what a great blessing he had showered upon me i understood that i understood that and finally he confesses lord i was so foolish and arrogant i was like a beast before you remember whenever we complain we are like that we are foolish we are arrogant we live like a beast before god and that man says finally for me it is good to draw near to you you are the strength of my heart you are my portion you will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory so stop looking at others this parable is a story of grace as well as a story of greed finally we see 
in verse 16 our lord bringing this parable to its appropriate end he says there very clearly so the last will be first and the first last for many are called but few chose see our perceived positions will make no difference in the kingdom of god because god shows no partiality he should understand that we should also understand in god's economy things are often just the opposite of what we expect we should also understand that at the end of the day we are going to be rewarded according to the spirit in which we served god that is the teaching of this parable then in verses 17 to 19 we see <coughs> our lord jesus christ telling his disciples about his coming death and resurrection if we go through the gospel of matthew we see that this is the third time our lord jesus christ was telling his disciples about his coming death and resurrection but this is something special why because this is a secret conference there were the passage says now they were going up to Jerusalem. Jesus took the twelve disciples aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and they will deliver him to the Gentiles, to mock, to scourge, and to crucify. On the third day he will rise again. So, the Lord says very clearly in detail eh, to, the, to, to his disciples about what was going to happen in a few days. He says the place it was going to happen in Jerusalem. He, so, he, he tells them the way it is going to happen. He was going to be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes. And they are going to condemn him to death. Because they do not the power to kill him, they will hand over him to the Gentiles, the Roman authorities. And those people, they will mock him, scourge him, and he will be crucified. The Jewish authorities, the Roman government, and Satan will give their best shot. Finally, we see God Almighty stepping in. On the third day, he will rise again. How wonderfully our Lord Jesus Christ prophesies the events that is going to happen in a few days. And that proves the authenticity of the word of God. Remember, the word that we have in our hands is the true word of God. It is God breathed. Don't ever doubt it. Ever. Then why did our Lord say this to the disciples? Why did he say this to them? Just to increase their faith. To increase their faith that they may believe that he is indeed the prophet Moses prophesied. That they may believe that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. That they may believe that everything has been going on according to God's plan that they may not get discouraged, that they may not lose hope, that they may not give up at the turn of events that were going to happen in Jerusalem. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ shared this with his disciples. He wanted them to be ready to receive him on the day of resurrection. But nothing of that sort happened. These people simply forgot it. And after his resurrection, these people did not even believe that he indeed rose again from the grave. And one of the disciples, even after hearing from his fellow disciples that they had seen the risen Lord, did not believe. So nothing of those sort happened. Subsequently, in verses 20 and 21, we see the mother of James coming with a request. She tells our Lord, grant me that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand 
and the other on your left in your kingdom. Surprising, surprising request. We must uh, understand that these two brothers were present when their mother made this request. See, our Lord had just talked about being crucified. And these people were interested in honors. Our Lord had just uh, talked about enduring the cross. And these people were interested in crown. One great man of God said like this, Jesus has many lovers of his kingdom, but few bearers of his cross. Jesus has many lovers of his kingdom, but few bearers of his cross. All desire to rejoice with him, but few are willing to suffer sorrow for his sake. All desire to rejoice with him, but few are willing to suffer sorrow for his sake. Many are willing to follow him unto the breaking of bread, but few are willing to drink his bitter cup. How true it is. It is human nature wanting good without experiencing the bad. We want to go to the promised land without going through the wilderness. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die to get there. We are interested in honors, but we are least interested in being dishonored first. Finally, in verses 25 to 28, we see, when the ten heard it, when the ten disciples heard it, these people were greatly displeased with the two brothers. And our Lord called them to himself and said to them, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Those who are in authority, those who are great, exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Many of us know this man called Cassius Clay, who later changed his name as Muhammad Ali. This man was boasting. He, he believed that he was the greatest boxer of all time. He used to tell everyone every day, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I am the greatest before I even knew that. Once he was in a flight, you know, the air hostess came to him during a time of turbulence and told him to wear the seat belt. This man replied, Superman doesn't need seat belts. And the air hostess uh, told him, Superman doesn't need flight also. So you better put the seat belt. You know what happened, you know? In a few years, this man had been humbled by a form of Parkinson's disease. He could not even walk properly. He could not even stand properly. He could not even hold something properly. And he could not even speak proper. Remember, this world is temporary. Human greatness is only temporary. True greatness in the sight of Lord Jesus Christ is not having fame and fortune. True greatness in the eyes of our Lord is being a servant to others. We should Understand that truth. If you ever do anything that other people consider it as great, then to God be the glory. Because he is the author of all good things in our life. He alone is great. We all should strive to be servants. Our Lord wants us to serve one another in love. If our Lord was not too proud, to serve, 
if our lord was not too proud to wash the feet of his disciples then what should we do how should we live what should be our attitude are we not as followers during the american revolution one man in uh, civilian clothes rode past a group of soldiers who were repairing uh, a small defensive barrier those those soldiers were clearly exhausted the leader of the group was shouting instructions to them without even attempting to help those poor soldiers asked why he was not helping that man responded sir i am a corporal so this man apologized dismounted and proceeded to help those poor soldiers and when the job was done this man turned to the corporal and said to him mr corporal next time if you have a job like this and few men to do this go to your commander in chief i will come and help you that man was none other than george washington the first president of the united states of america so our lord says very clearly but whoever desires to be great among you let him be your servant whoever desires to be first among you let him be your slave just as the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and give his life a ransom for many as we sang this morning so let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him each other's needs to prefer for it is christ we are serving this is our god the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to him the servant king